Good morning, everybody. So, here's today's project. Got cat backhoe. I don't know what model. I guess it says it's a 416C. Anyway, she's got about something over 8,000 hours on her. She's a little loose in a few places. Now, last, uh, what would have been last winter, they were complaining that it was pretty sloppy on the swing, and they attributed that to this set of pins and bushings, um, and there was a lot of play. As a matter of fact, it was shear and retaining bolts off. But at the time, they had me look at it, wanted me to line bore it. I couldn't see a good way to do it because you can't get a bar through here. There's not enough clearance for a support bearing here, and a bar doesn't go through, and I didn't have the boring mill set up yet. So what I did for them at that time is got some, I believe it was 8620 steel stock, custom machine to pair of pins. The holes were all lagged out and way oversized. Custom machine to pins for this thing with a head on them that was as large as the, it was kind of oval shaped on the hole, and I made the head as big as the largest dimension on that worn hole. And then on this end, I actually machined the pin undersize, and then I machined a bushing that fit the end of that pin, pretty heavy wall, like 3 sixteenths or quarter, I don't remember, that was also machined to be the diameter of the largest direction it was worn. And then what I did is brought those two pins, I had them heat treated, uh, I say heat treat, actually case hardened, brought them out here and then hand ground the head of that bolt until it fit in and fit the hole nice on this end. And on that end, did the same thing with the bushing, hand ground it. And then that bushing slips over the end of the pin and is retained by this big cap and bolt setup. It's worked great. Got rid of all the play in it. But when I did that, I told them that I was convinced that was only half the problem, that this set of pins and bushings was the other half. And they opted to run it, see how they liked it. Well, they didn't like it. It the operators didn't care for it because yes we fixed that slot but there was still a bunch here so we're back now and we're going to bore this i'll show you here's the uh, pin currently you see a little loosey-goosey and that's with a brand new pin in the hole i don't even know what it was like with the old one and then the bushings are cracked so i'm pretty doggone sure we're going to be welding and boring the uh, base of the boom too but to begin with this is ductile iron. We tried a weld test on it just to prove to ourselves, and yep, welds rock hard. So we are not welding and boring this. I'm going to bore this set of holes oversize, and then uh, make a set of bushings and press in there. Now, one nice thing I got going for me is Cat left all kinds of extra side room. I just got done checking that. So these bushings I'm not worried about because they have a bolt through them. Um, those can't go anywhere. But these set, especially, they're pretty narrow. I was worried about them walking out. There's so much side slap that I've just done some measuring and determined I can put an eighth inch shoulder on that and just have it standing outside the boss because there's, shoot, three quarters of an inch. Uh, yeah, almost three quarters of an inch wider here than what this width is so i can just put heads on and press them in and then they'll be captured because they can't come to the inside because they'll run into the uh ears on the uh boom and they can't go to the outside because my shoulder will stop them so i'm feeling a lot better about that than what i had been before i determined we could do that so anyway i'll start getting set up i'll bring you guys back when we get the uh, boring gear set up on this thing and ready to punch them holes out all right we're cutting we're peeling uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch off on a side right now. I'm taking her right to finish dimension. We just broke through the first one. Cooking right along. I'm going to rapid traverse over here to the uh, next board, and we'll see if she likes that one. Getting further from our bearing here, so it might not like this one quite as well. Let's see what she says. here is keeping enough load on the bar like I am really cranking the feed on hard to keep the chatter out of it now that means my hole is going to be undersized because there's a lot of bar deflection but I'll let it cut back through there on a spring pass after this really it's cutting pretty gadgum good I'm uh, quite pleased with it
So anyway, plan is to have 3 16 thick bushings. I like the look of 8th inch better as far as material removal, but I'm paranoid that's going to coin out too easy. So. Alright, we're going to back her up now. Take her back through the bore and then we'll let it cut through here at its own pace once a little slower. Make sure the holes are round and actually the same size once. All right, so I've got her all bored out, broke down, ready to go make some bushings now. You can see, by the way, so I think I mentioned it for the first half of this, where welding this ductile iron, it is scary stuff. I literally, like, one swat with a hammer and this whole chunk fell off. All four welds broke right off. When you're uh, boring and your boring gear is tack welded to ductile iron like this, you have got to watch your P's and Q's because if you get vibration, it will just walk your welds right off the metal. So that's why I was taking such heavy cuts is to force, make sure it was smooth. It can handle load. It cannot handle shock. I walked around just like smack, 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 about three swats. Every piece of fixturing I had on here fell right off the thing. But so anyhow, now it's uh, time to get some dimensions on all of this, see where I actually ended up. I don't waste a lot of time trying to hit a particular number when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I set my uh, tool depth to the theoretical correct diameter and cut. I already checked a little bit, and I had to do this set, and then I didn't have enough travel to bore all the way through, so then I reset the tool and did the other set, and I've got about nine thousandths difference between this and that. I was just using the heel of my uh, caliper to just measure tool stick out, so... Not a very precise method of doing it, but it's not worth fighting it. I'm going to put them in the lathe and machine them where it's easy to make nice, precise uh, hit dimensions easier anyway. So. All right, well, I'll show you guys uh, some of that process when I get back to the shop start making bushings. All right, we're back to the shop. See my uh, high-tech prints I got drawn up here. Got a hunk of uh, heavy wall and lathe, and we're going to go about trying to buzz us out some... Uh, bushings or spacers whatever you want to call them sleeves so anyway i'm going to get started on this i don't think i'm going to bother shooting video of that you all know how the lathe works i'll uh get rolling and bring you back if anything exciting happens all right first phase of this is done you can see we got nice slap free now bushing draw pressed in now time phase b those are not supposed to go in halfway by hand and rattle around Pretty much expected that. You can see what happens when they crack. Swags the end oversize. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a heck of a taper on that thing now. So that's what's next. All right, we're making our uh, first cut here, cutting it oversized in preparation for welding. Fifty thousand cent aside. One bummer here is. This four foot bar, I don't know if I'm going to be able to cut all the way through both of those without resetting. Not a big deal on the uh, overcut for welding, because I don't really care if I'm exact, but it'd be awfully nice to be able to cut all the way through to a one shot for my finished cut. But we'll see. Oh, here we go. First side's welded up here. Came out real nice. Now we gotta move over and weld this one, so. All right, we just finished welding our way through the second bore. Looks good. Only lit the blocks on fire minimally, so life's good. Gonna break down the bore welder now, and we're gonna go to cutting. All right, so we're done with the boring. Got a nice finish in there, looks good. Um, these are so close to the size of my boring bar, my measuring gear won't go in there, so I measure it by digging through my drill bit collection, finding drill bits routes right, and feeler gauging next to the bar. But that's not real precise, so intentionally, well, I mean, it could be precise, but I'm scared of it. So, anyway, 
I intentionally leave them a little tight. So right now these bores are both about 5,000 small. That's quick work for the sun and hones. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. I got to quick grind the faces up smooth where my weld came through, knock these off, grind those up, and then now I'll get on here with a rigid hone, and then we're going to press some bushings in. All right. Well, that's another job in the books. Um, I put uh, four thousandths of press fit on those. I don't remember what they are in inches. What are they? They're about, yeah, fat two and a half inches. So anyways, just under two thou per inch of press. And I mean, they were definitely good 20 tons to put them in there, I'd say, from what my pressure gauge was showing on the porta power. So anyway, they should not come loose again. So this one's great. I'm very happy with how it all came out. We've got, uh, say, good solutions here. These, uh, let me think here, what did I put on all of these? I didn't put quite as heavy a press on these, um, mostly because I was concerned with not wanting to put too much tension on these ears. They looked a little thin to me. So these I put about thou and a half an inch worth of press on, and I was able to drive those in with a block and a three-pound maul. Um, anyway, so the one here is captured by Merida having a bolt through it, and then this one, of course, I put this uh, shoulder on it. And it worked out really good because I don't know why Cat did this, but they left all kind of clearance in here between that ear and that ear. So there was plenty of room to leave an eighth inch shoulder on my bushing. And that way it can't walk in because it'll run into the boom and it can't walk out now because of my um, shoulder on there. And that's always my concern. I don't know if you can see, like that ear is only seven eighths of an inch, inch wide. And, I'm always very concerned when you're putting really thin bushings in. they got a nasty, nasty habit of trying to walk their way back out of there. But Anyway, this one's a good fix. Um, the only part about it I don't love is just the fact that we're removing material from stuff that I think is a little under-engineered here to begin with. But the only alternative, and I'm sure some of you out there will argue with me, I heavily, heavily, heavily dislike welding up ductile iron um i would have had to have cut it at least as far overside as, as i did to put these bushings in and then i do not buy that yarn that welding it up is as strong as ever it is absolutely not you uh, harden the iron even if you run in there with 99 percent nickel the weld won't be hard but the iron right next to it will just by merit of heat and chill the only way to avoid that would be to preheat the whole casting controlled cool down and even then you're introducing stress into the material so i'm not even the slightest bit convinced that welding that by the time you board it over far enough to safely weld it and then recutting it would be any stronger than this so if for some reason one of these ever decides to break off the fix is going to be this whole thing will have to come off go on my boring mill and I will deck the face of this off and drill it and tap it for big retaining bolts and fabricate a piece that bolts onto the back of here. But I don't see that being an issue. The loads on this thing are almost all actually pushing in towards that uh, king post. So anyhow, so there it is. That's the end of the party. I'm just going to pick up my tools and get out of here.